The Yazidis are a Kurdish minority which mostly and generally speaks Kurdish. They are by many seen as the origin of the Kurds, as most of today's Kurds most likely belong to the Yazidi religion before converting to Islam. The religion of Yazidi Kurds is called Yazidism. This religion is much older than Islam, Christianity and Judaism, but combines certain aspects from all three of them including the old Persian religion, Zoroastrianism. Among the Yazidis, endogamy culture is strictly performed, meaning that the Yazidis, for most cases, only are allowed to marry other Yazidis. Their original living area is in the Nineveh province in Iraq, which among Yazidi Kurds are known as Ezid Khan, or the land of the Yazidis. This area includes Shingal, Shekhan and part of Bakhida district. In and around the region of Shingal, the Yazidis have several old and holy monuments for their religious practice. One of the most symbolic one is a tomb of Sheikh Adi in Lalish. Sheikh Adi is one of the most central figures in Yazidi faith. At least once in their lifetime, Yazidi Kurds are expected to make a six-day pilgrimage to Lalish to visit the tomb of Sheikh Adi and other sacred places. Some claims that the Yazidism is a branch of Yazdanism, which is the pre-Islamic native religion of the Kurds. This theory is however denied by some and claimed by others. The Yazidis are monotheistic believing in God as creator of the world, which he has placed under the care of seven holy beings or angels. The chief among them, known as Melek Taus, is a peacock angel. The peacock angel, as world ruler, causes both good and bad to befall individuals, and this ambivalent character is reflected in myths of his own temporary fall from God's favor before his remorseful tears extinguished the fires of his hellish prison and he was reconciled with God. This belief has been linked by some people of Sufi mystical reflections on Iblis, who also refused to prostrate to Adam despite God's express command to do so. Because of this similarity to the Sufi tradition of Iblis, some followers of the monotheistic religion identify the peacock angel with their own unredeemed evil spirit Satan. This has incited centuries of persecution of the Yazidis as devil worshippers. However, asking a fellow Yazidi of this matter and he will give you an explanation of this accusation for being false. This is mostly just a misunderstanding. Persecution of Yazidis has continued in their home communities with the borders of modern Iraq, mostly on the fundamentalist Sunni Muslims. Beginning in August 2014, the Yazidis were targeted by the Islamic State in its campaign to rid Iraq and its neighboring countries of non-Islamic influences. We will talk about that genocide later on in the video. There was a large Yazidi community who existed in Syria, but they have slowly vanished due to the persecution by the Ottoman Empire in former days. Several punitive expeditions were organized against the Yazidis by the Ottoman governors of Diyarbakir, Mosul and Baghdad. The objective of this persecution was the forced conversion of Yazidis to the Sunni Islam branch of the Ottoman Empire. Even though the Yazidis have had a long history of persecution, there is also some troubling matters among them. The strict rules and loyalty bound which have been created after years of persecution has also made honor killings a more plain action among the community. For example, the murder of Dua Khalil Aswad, the 17-year-old girls which were stoned to death 
for according to reports converting to Islam. This action eventually led to a series of suicide bombings against the Ezidi community, in one case killing 500 Ezidis. According to statistics from 2012 of the KRG government in southern Kurdistan, where the Ezidi community also were included, most cases of the honor killings in the KRG region comes from the strict traditions from the Ezidi Kurds. According to the Human Rights Watch, Yazidis were also under the Arabization progress of Saddam Hussein between 1970 and 2003. In 2009, some Yazidis who had previously lived under the Arabization process of Saddam Hussein complained about the political tactics of the KRG that were intended to make Yazidis identify themselves as Kurds. A report from Human Rights Watch in 2009 declared that incorporated disputed territories in northern Iraq, particularly the Nineveh province into the Kurdish region, the KDP authorities had used KRG political and economical resources to make SEDs identify themselves as Kurds. A report which were totally denied by KRG. Even though they mostly are geographically located in Kurdish regions, and even though they are speaking Kurdish, there has been a dispute as to whether Yazidis are Kurdish or not. Additionally, the Soviet Union considered the Yazidis to be Kurds, as did Sharaf Khan Bidlis, a Kurdish emir which lived in the late 1590s. He claimed that seven of the Kurdish tribes was at least partly of Yazidi origin. According to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, it is disputed even among the community itself as well as among Kurds whether Yazidis are ethnically Kurds or from a distinct ethnic group. The Yazidis' cultural practices are observably Kurdish and almost all speak Kermanji, which is the Northern Kurdish dialect. The very old scripts of the Yazidi religion is also written in ancient Kurdish, which according to many experts is evidence enough to claim that the Yazidis are of Kurdish ethnicity. Due to long time oppression and persecution, large groups of Yazidis have moved to Turkey, Armenia and also to Europe especially to Germany, where there are over 100,000 Ezidi Kurds. Now the conflict of Ezidi Orgin is new. Only in the last 100 years the group denying this fact have been created. Mostly due to the fact that Muslim Kurds have aimed their loyalty towards other Muslim powers, rather than to the Ezidi brothers and sisters. Among most Ezidi Kurds and among Kurds of other religions, the Ezidis are ethnically Kurdish. In 2014, with the territorial gains of Islamic State, there was much upheaval in the Iraqi Ezidi population. ISIS captured Shingal in August 2014 following the withdrawal of Peshmerga troops of Masoud Barzani. This forced up to 50,000 Yazidis to flee into the nearby mountains. In early August, the town of Shingal was nearly deserted as Kurdish Peshmerga forces were no longer able to keep ISIS forces from advancing. ISIS had previously declared the Yazidis to be devil worshippers and had taken the two nearby small oil fields and the town of Zumar as part of a plan to try to seize Mosul's hydroelectric dam. Up to 200,000 fled the city before it was captured by ISIS forces, giving rise to fears of a humanitarian tragedy. Most of the population fleeing Shingal had the ultimate goal of reaching the city of Duhok in Kurdistan. The distance from Shingal to Duhok is normally a 5 hour drive by car. Concern for the elderly and those of bad health were expressed by the refugees, who told reporters of the lack of water and food. 
Reports coming from Shingal stated that sick or elderly Ezidis who couldn't flee were being executed by ISIS. Now this location were very problematic as they would either face dehydration if they stayed or slaughtered by ISIS if they went back. Soon enough, the Kurdish groups of YPG and PKK came to their rescue. In battle with ISIS, they opened a humanitarian corridor for the Izidi Kurds, which saved about 20 to 30,000 people. Even though many were saved, thousands were still trapped and another 10,000 of Izidis had been kidnapped by ISIS and either killed, raped or sold as sex slaves in the slave market of ISIS. In November 2015, a coalition of Peshmerga YPG and PKK with support from American warplanes started an offensive against ISIS presence in Shingal, which were called the Fury of Melek Taus. Among 10,000 soldiers participated in the offensive against ISIS which had about 1,000 soldiers. After three days, KRG claimed that their operation was successful and that the control of Shingal were in the hands of KRG again. After retaking Shingal, many mass graves of Shezidi Kurds have been discovered and even though most of the women slaves in the hand of ISIS have been saved, there are still many to save. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment on this channel so that you don't miss any further documentaries. Here are two other documentaries which you may like.